Hi, I'm Lucas, and this is Christ Forerunners. Right now, in the political realm, is it going to be biblical? Well, we've been told that it was, and I wasn't quite sure a believer of it until about a week ago when I had a revelation. See, I was studying for the next subject I was going to talk about. Um, now, I was in Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve were talking about, at the beginning, you have the four rivers, or the four heads. Well, the four heads led me to Revelation with the four living creatures. Some that kept telling me to go, go over there and look at it. So I open up to the four living creatures, and that's where this revelation happened. Bear with me. All right. So if you will, you want to turn with me to Revelations, if you're following along in your own Bible, to chapter 4, verse 7. It says this, And the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature like a calf. And the third living creature had a face of a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. So, I'm reading this. Right? And I'm reading it over and over and it finally hit me. Like a lion, like a calf, had a face like an eagle. Why are three of them like an animal one is a face? So, I dug deep into the meaning, the true meaning of the Greek word they were using. Now, there's a couple meanings there, but some of them don't fit the context of what was happening in the dream. After all, we have to we know that most ghosts, which is calf, we know that most ghosts isn't a shoot or a sprout in the passage, right? So with that said, let's look at what they are. Uh, lion is Leon, which is a brave and mighty hero. Calf is Moscos, which is um, a boy or girl, especially if fresh and delicate. Um, man, man is Anthropos, which is a human being, male or female. And eagle is... Aethos. Now, Aethos means either an eagle or a vulture, either one. Um, but this one we had to dig deeper in, right? Aethos comes from air, and it says like it sounds air, but air comes from Aemi. Now, Aemi is the key right here. Aemi means to respire. And what does respire mean? Respire means to inhale or exhale for the purpose of life, to breathe freely. So with that said, this is what I came up with. Lion equals President Trump, right? Calf are the children being sacrificed and tortured and trafficked. Um, man would be you and me, and eagle would be the Great Awakening. Now I know this is kind of out there, but Again, this is a dream that John had, so we can't take it literally. We have to kind of decipher and go with that. Um, so bear with me. I got a lot of explanation going on later on. All right. In Revelation chapter 6 is the first seal, and that's when the living creatures takes John, the first one. And on here, chapter 6, it says, verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb, who is our Christ, opened one of the seals, and I heard it, as it were a noise of thunder. Now, I ask, what sound is made before a storm? Right? And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, the true words there are not conquering and a conquer. It's actually overcoming and he might overcome. All right? But if we go back to the beginning there, and this is, Behold, a white horse. White was brilliant. Like light, brilliant. Um, and he that sat on him had a bow. Well, bow comes from taxon. Taxon comes from its root word, tico. Tico means to bring forth, right? And then you have crown. Crown in its physical form was like a mark of royalty, right? Um, but we need to pay attention to the metaphorical form. 
The, metaphor, the metaphorical form is an eternal blessedness which will be given as a prize to the genuine servants of God and Christ. So when you put that together, we have a man who is brilliant, who is going out bringing forth, and President Trump has brought forth a lot of things, who is blessed by God and is set out overcoming and to overcome. I mean, President Trump has had opposition to his beliefs, his views, you know, way before he was elected. And he was overcoming. He set out overcoming all the lies and deceit. No. But he marched on. He marched through as a soldier whose breath was given to him without pause. It kind of fits for me. So the second cell here is Revelation chapter uh, again, 6, verse 3. It says, We and open the second seal, I heard a second living creature say, Come and see. And he went out, another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The key to this one is sword. Sword, in the biblical aspect, is your word. We know this from Ephesians 6. Um, Ephesians 6, 17, and it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So with that being said, I ask, Great power was given to him that sat thereon and take peace from the earth on a red. Now red is fire, flame. Who can cause division? Um, who can say things and people will kill one another based upon what was said? Who has became so, their words became so important. They became the authority of, of pretty much life. You turn on TV and whatever they say, people believe. Whatever they say, people do. Um, it's not a far stretch to say that's our media. Our media has definitely caused a divide between our society, between people, between cultures. Um, yeah, they have, they have taken, they can essentially quiet you up. If they don't like what you're saying, they go, they'll get rid of you on any kind of platform. Um, and they have with their platform, they can reach towns, cities, states, the whole world if they wanted as they do. And, um, it's very, very telling that the power was given to them with a great sword and that voice is being great and magnified on any kind of platform that they choose, right? It's pretty sad, but that's the nature as it is right now. That's the, the, the evil that we're trying to fight versus the good that we, who we are. We need to open the third seal. I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the fourth beast say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see that not hurt the oil and wine. So black, ink, balances, law and order. See, we the people, we determine what laws come in. And depending on if we like the law or not, we'll vote it in or not. And if we do vote it in, it doesn't become a law until ink is put to paper. Black ink. Now the balance is, it, it, it's funny how man is associated with this one because it's the man that create the balances, the law and order, you know, um, whatever, if, if we don't have any law and order within us, chaos can assume, you know, anarchy runs amok. Uh, people take in their own laws, do whatever they want to do, uh, whatever they see fit. You know, many people live by the, oh, as long as you're good, you know, it, it's okay. Well, someone's good compared to somebody else's good is different, you know, and most people's good compared to our father's good 
is way different. But it's it's us that create the, the law and order within the realm of Earth, right? But if you go on to this, it says here, I heard a voice in the midst of the fourth beast say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Now, wheat, the term, or the, the word they use here is, is wheat, but the word is sitos, which is wheat, grain, or corn. Corn is ready for the harvesting. And penny. The Greek word for penny that they use is denarion, right? Denarion was also called pence. Kind of uncanny that our vice president was named Pence. Has he bought and paid for? I don't know. So yet to be seen. But if he was, it'd be kind of fitting. You give us, you know, Pence, and then we have a, a bought and paid for establishment. But here again, if you continue, it says, and see that not hurt the oil and the wine. Oil, oil was used to fuel lamps. It was also used to heal. But most importantly, oil was used to anoint believers in Christ. Right? So see that not hurt the believers in Christ and the wine. Wine obviously is the blood of Christ. And again, we believe in that, that it was. So when you look at it, See that not hurt the ones who believe in that the blood of Christ was spilled for our sake. You know, we need to bring and continue the teachings of our Father, the teachings of Christ. And by His anointing, we will. Fourth seal. Almost done here. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth living creature say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. All interpretations of this horse horseman and being pale is pretty true to what you would find a pale horse but pale actually comes from chloros which means a green or yellowish pale but chloros comes from its root word chloe which means a green herb now if if you read that with that in mind see how it sounds and I looked, and behold, a green herb, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed him. Let me ask, what kind of green herb would bring death and hell to those? Some would say marijuana, and I can assure you it's not that. Um, may I suggest opium? There's a major, major opium epidemic in this world, not just here in America, but all over. Um, people have overdosed, people have died, people that have taken it have um, just gone through that feeling of, I need to have it. They'll do whatever they want or whatever they can to get it. Um, lives have been destroyed, families have been destroyed, you know. Hell follows. And obviously, if you take enough of it, death follows. And then I ask, how many men have gained power in the cultivating of this drug, right? How many riches have they gained? It's not far off to put the multi-billion dollar industry of drugs in a company that with child and human trafficking. I mean, after all, some of these places in the earth that, that cultivate this are being tortured. They're being told that if they don't follow suit, they'll either kill you, um, they'll kill family members. You know, it's pretty, pretty intense if you start to go down that rabbit hole of, of finding out the distribution and what it takes in order to create it, to cultivate it. And sometimes you use the beast of the field to cultivate it. Now, I'm not saying, again, 
that President Trump is who is what's being depicted here in the Bible. But I think what he's doing right now is very much spoken of in the Bible. He's bringing out a lot of things up to, to everyone. He's bringing forth a lot of information, waking a lot of people up to the fact that there's human trafficking and child trafficking, child molestation going on. And a lot of people are quiet to it. But when you open up a seal for the world to see, that's pretty biblical. Like him or not, what he's doing on that end with the children, with the human trafficking, that's biblical. And more people need to see that. And they need to recognize it. And they need to understand it. Why is this happening? I would hope that evil is, is being exposed and the people that partake in it are going to be dealt with. And when they're dealt with it, that's not going to be for the faint of heart. You know. And President Trump has gone through a lot. He's been betrayed by many people. But the ones that stood by him, the ones that still believe in his cause, they are the ones that are going to endure with him. What does it say? If you go to um, Matthew 10, Matthew 10, 22, I think it says, And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. I'm enduring to the end. I'll tell you that much. Now, I'm not saying what I did or this revelation here is true. I'm just saying I was able to see things in a different view, with different eyes. Um, and it's pretty hard not to look at it and say, yeah, a lot of things that were laid out here are not true because they are pretty true and uncanny in the way things happen. Um, in any event, I think it's a great great eye-opener for myself in the events that are taking place and again with seeing the revelation here with the information that i've given out and with my belief in my christ and my god i'm not worried i'm okay the world is going to be an okay place and i will continue to endure straight and long for them thank you brother peace and love and remember, all glory goes to Yahshua Christ, Yahweh our Father. Amen.